Hello everyone, welcome back to the lab. But today I'm going to try to save this uh, neat uh, power supply. Uh, the manufacturer is the Power Supply Design Incorporated, uh, New York. Uh, the unit, uh, it's a very rough shape and uh, need a lot of attention. The knob over here it's missing and uh, has been colored don't know why also onto the top this is also it's a uh, sort of paint uh, of course has been sold as non-functional uh, this is how i have received it i have these screws loosen it, I'm not sure if they are the original ones or not, but at least there is something. Uh, let's flip it around. It's missing one foot. And here we have the original cord, which is in good shape in terms of rubber, but the plug itself, it's bent. And here we have a set of jumpers that uh, makes the instrument uh, have several purposes, but uh, those two, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, are for the remote control. Now, this uh, power supply has uh, an output voltage of 60 volt, or 50, 54, let's say. Actually, it's 0 0.250 volt, but uh, it should rise up to 54. And I would like to use it as a power supply to feed the multiple input regulator board of the Tronix 7000 series. Uh, the main reason is for troubleshooting. I have many of those uh, um, the Tronix oscilloscopes that are faulty in the power supply and I would like to make a sort of test jig in order to be able to repair. I know it's a nightmare, it's always frustrating uh, working on those, but we need to do the step here before. Hopefully we can save it. There is uh, the needle here that is broken. Uh, there, it's missing the very top. Uh, let's zoom in a bit. Yeah, as I said, it's a rough shape, very dirty. So, before I do anything else, I will uh, remove from the case and see inside how it looks like. I'm removing the front panel screws, and I think these are original. They are uh, sort of tapered, so for to self align to the thread. And the removal of the case requires also the removal of the rear nut here. And let's see how it's inside. Oh, that's not uh, really nice. It's uh, quite, oh, there is another ball, another nut that's fell onto the ground. That is a dormant not we will see later on yeah it's dirty there is uh, another piece here don't know exactly what it is so you have transistors and adjustment point few capacitors it's a burnishing sign, it, I think it's missing something here. Oh, it's in the back, actually. So that seems to uh, have suffered uh, overheating. Let's check. These are power resistors. And here we have uh, the main filter capacitors. But look at the condition of this thing. That is very bad. Fuses. So, first of all, 
let's clean it up. So I will do off camera. Well, as uh, I have started the cleaning process on this side, well, by the way, the model is TW5005 and I say, as I started this side, uh, I noted that uh, there are some dust behind the, insul the transistor insulations. So I'm going to remove one by one, check it if it's okay, clean the insulation, the mica, and then apply some fresh uh, thermal paste and then reassemble. I was hoping that the removal would be easier but unfortunately, it's not socketed the transistor, and no, none of the transistor are socketed. So I need to uh, desolder the legs, the, the wires, and remove it. But as you can see, there is a residuals of sort of grease, and here it's really dirty. So that gives me the opportunity to clean it as it should be done. Thirst transistor tested okay. I've tested this capacitor, removing from those, I've clipped it, removing from there. It's a measure as new, unbelievable. So I will uh, remount this, check the other one. I had clipped it as uh, with this, was uh, measuring as faulty, but because the mini grip grabber doesn't make contact onto the leg. That is a pity. First transistor is done, three remaining. Okay, so the transistor job is done, all measures fine. Fresh uh, thermal paste. I'm going to uh, check uh, the this capacitor uh, condition and let's uh, place the data here. I think it's... Uh, 30 volt, so 30 volt, aluminum lithics, so let's check value, that's fine, dielectric absorption, 3%, that is like new, ESR, nothing, let's see leakage, Wow, they measure as brand new, unbelievable. So I will go ahead with the check of all the others, but I'm suspecting that this capacitor, these capacitors are really of high quality. Uh, there is another one of 1200, then two of 400 microfarad. So let's check that. I'm measuring the 400 microfarad capacitors and they are absolutely perfect as uh, the other ones. <clears throat> so the capacitor quality is astonishing. Really impressed about that. Okay, so the capacitor check is finished. All measures perfect. But then I spotted this uh, resistor and it's cracked and it exploded with a hole on a side. And I'm afraid that uh, this, uh, it's a problem. And then I checked the fuse and the fuse is blown. This one, that one is still good. Uh, they are requested to be one amp slow blow. So I'm going to check also all the diodes. But this, uh, for sure, it's uh, it's open. Now here we have uh, the resistor which measure 400 ohms and should be 5.6, I think, and the other one measured 6.2 it's a bit high in value but should be usable so this must be replaced well, as expected the resistor is divided into halves and here is a spotted of blasting 
the inside of the resistor itself. Okay, I've replaced the resistor with a bit different form of factor. Probably it's one watt and instead of half of a watt, but it measure 5.7, which is fine. So that is done. Um, however, I have downloaded the uh, manual and I can't spot this uh, resistor onto this uh, schematic. So I don't know exactly if this is the right uh, revision of schematic for the instrument. So let's check uh, if there are any other obvious things and then we can proceed with the front panel cleaning. As I didn't find anything obvious wrong, obviously wrong, so I want to address this front panel and the meter. Hopefully I will find the tip of the needle down there and hopefully I can maybe glue it uh, onto the meter itself. Let's see if I can repair. There are signs of oxidation here. Don't know if the meter themselves are still uh, still usable. But look at that. It's really, really bad. Well, I don't think there is a, a way to fix the problem of the front panel and the meter without the complete front panel dismantling. So that is what I'm going to do now. So I'm removing the meters and all the knobs are already removed. I removed the meter and I was hoping that was simpler to get inside it. It's crimped, the bezel is crimped. Uh, but uh, I can't uh, live like that. There are too many dust uh, signs inside. And, oh, look at that. I've spotted the needle tip right there. So let's attempt to open it. Well, unfortunately, the corrosion has uh, eaten up uh, the bezel and it's it was already cut it into halves or at least uh, it's broken here and there are also oxidations all around however i've been able to to open it and it seems fine i need just to find the tip which hopefully i did not yeah it's over there Okay, let's try to fix it, but I think it's uh, aluminum. So hopefully with super glue will, will be possible to fix it, to glue it together. Well, I've glued with super glue the very tip and is that perfect? Surely not, but uh, still, uh, still there seems uh, that hold and uh, so let's see in the next uh, half hour if uh, when the glue is completely cured if it's uh, it's uh, it will hold the the needle like that well as you can see i've removed the dial and there are quite a bit of oxidation uh, debris that uh, must be removed from from the meter but the needle, it holds. And I also have tested the coil, it's okay. So I think I need to remove the entire meter from the case. Well, it's, it was not difficult just to unsolder those two leads and it's out. Now, the instrument is reassembled, everything inside is clean, the internal resistor of 56 ohm is fine. But I've noted that uh, it's not well balanced. If I turn uh, 
doesn't remain in the same position. That usually means that those uh, uh, balancing weights inside there are out of position. Now I have spotted that this is quite a bit out. Don't know if it is, it's dropped it or what, but uh, it seems that uh, we need to adjust that if uh, we we are able. I don't want to create more damage on it, so I will try. The front panel removal is finished and it has been quite a bit complicated and I had to remove all the wiring across the binding posts and uh, the pilot lamp. I have also removed the capacitors across the binding posts. They are 50 volt, rated at 50 volts. And as the instrument can go a bit over, I wanna replace those so despite they are fine with higher rating uh, voltages. And also probably I will increase a bit in, in capacitance. But the, all the other things are, are out, they are fine. So I can now take care of the front panel and try to restore it. Well, I'm in the middle of the process of cleaning the knobs and binding posts, but this is the meter how it came up and not bad if we think uh, where we start. Same thing for the front panel, came up uh, pretty well uh, for the condition that I received this, uh, it's, uh, well, pretty acceptable. So we go ahead, finish the cleaning of the parts, finish the cleaning of the inside, and we will reassemble the front panel, and we will be ready for a test. We are almost there with the cleaning. There is a thing that I want to test, which is uh, the meter reading, which uh, should give us a bit of relief. This one is the one repair it. This is his brother. They're doing fine. Sorry for the white hand. I have just touched up the indication mark onto the knobs. So at this stage, I need to clean the hardware and the board that remain to be cleaned all and all the controls and we will be ready to reassemble it. Well, I'm trying to give maintenance to the potentiometer and uh, they are really bad. This one is uh, doing very bad. Uh, it's uh, jumping all over the place and when it's on the end that should be in short is 33 ohms. And then we have some jump uh, to max. So yeah, we have, we have contact problem over there, but we have contact problem also here. And I think this one is even worse. Um, <clears throat> we have 9K, but uh, there is max, never short, so I don't know how to take it apart. Well, at least I've been able to repair this. Now, if I go down, down to the minimum, I now have low ohms. So I think it's now working as it should. And to fix it, I have uh, passed the iron with flux. Not sure if this has uh, released the contact or if it has uh, jumped the, the broken winding. I don't know. I've been able to spray contact cleaner onto the front uh, potentiometer and now it's working. But the rear one 
it's behaving like the other one so we have uh, when I go down to the minimum that should give us zero ohm, it's going to 32. So I'm afraid uh, we have the same problem. So I will go ahead and open the potentiometer cover. By the way, the total resistance should be 100 ohm. It's, uh, it's quite precise for the age. So hopefully I can fix it. Well, I've been able to fix also this. So, Time to test those two. Well, the other two potentiometer, uh, potentiometers are doing fine, but I have a strange uh, result. The, across the terminals, I have 197 ohm on this one and uh, 700 ohm almost on the other potentiometer. Now, I don't think it's a, uh, yeah, 690. I don't think it's a problem of potentiometer. I think the problem is uh, in the circuit. So let's check uh, that uh, before to reassemble it. By the way, uh, we are at the point that we can reassemble actually. So I will do a bit of troubleshooting, quick one. If uh, it goes okay, then we fix it, otherwise I will reassemble and try to test it. Power switch was in trouble and it was reading 25 ohms. I've been able to spray onto the sphere over there and uh, it seems that I soaked the contacts and now I'm reading correctly, I mean below 1 ohm or, or something like that. Let's see. Yeah, 0 0.1. That is fixed. Well, after so much work, I think it's uh, time to make some uh, electric test. I will make some room. I will remove all the toolings and try to uh, power it up. Well, I have not yet applied power. Uh, I'm not going to use a Varec as I've already charged all the capacitors to the rated uh, voltage. So I'm going to apply power through the dim bulb and uh, with my 110 volt uh, facility as the uh, power supply is set for 110 and I will leave it like that. So we'll, I will uh, apply power right now and see what's happened. Absolutely nothing. So let's check uh, some continuity. It seems absolutely dead. Well, checking the primary of transformer Continuity seems fine. Well, I've replaced my plug adapter as it seems a bit tarnished. So let's test now. Okay, now we have a bit of glow in the in the bulb. So clearly, I was uh, facing a bad contact but uh, I don't have any, any signs of movement onto the needles of the meter. Let's see, nothing happened here, but something happened there. And indeed we have voltage. Okay, so it seems that uh, we have a working section, but uh, a failed power supply on this side. Yeah, remember, we found a broken resistor uh, split into halves. So probably there is uh, still some, some fault. But we at least have some uh, some life which is good uh, 
let's see for fine tunings voltage seems a bit too low but can be regulated yeah we are down to 47 should be at 50 and the meter also need to be calibrated by the way this is the meter that i have repaired and it looks uh, pretty nice uh, for for the kind of damage that it has oh by the way the low voltage might be because i'm through the dim bulb so let's try to to increase uh, to the maximum and bypass the dim bulb yes indeed uh, it went to over 50 volt which seems to be fine however i wanna do the troubleshooting of the non-working section uh, with the dim bulb uh, attached well one thing that i've noted is that uh, through the dim bulb i'll show you that uh, the increasing of the current here uh, reduce the voltage on the other channel it should be separated so i believe there is an overload here and that's why i don't have any output so what i've done i've placed my own meter on to the binding post and i'm reading zero ohm so a dead short i uh, need to figure out what is going on well as a First thing that I've checked is the capacitor that I have replaced here, 47 microfarad, 63 volts. They are oriented in the right uh, way, so they look fine. So something else is going on. And my plug, by the way, it's removed. So let's see if there is for some reason something wrong after the uh, front panel removal. Let's keep this on. Yeah, still that short. Just for comparison, the other channel, uh, the onto the binding post we have eight kilo ohm. Well, since my schematic do doesn't match, the only way I have is to make comparison between the two power supplies. This is the A channel and this is the B channel, as it is, uh, this part, it, it is almost burned out, it's stamped on. I was poking around and I found that this diode, what looks to be a diode, is in that short whereas on the other channel it's 8 kilo ohm which is by the way the same resistance that i have found onto the binding post so i'm afraid that this diode is exactly across the the output terminal so i'm going to remove that and test it i removed the diode diode is fine or at least uh, seems like so i should still have that short which i have i think i have found something i have spotted a mistake which is over here and as we can see there is a washer a locking washer that uh, fell out when I was mounting here. So I will zoom out and hopefully that will fix the problem. Let's see. That is really locked. Would you look at that? That was the problem. The washer that came out and I didn't see it when I was reassembling. Well, let's see if that has uh, fixed all the issues. Still through the dim bulb. 
let's raise up a bit that we still have no output from the from the other oh man that might be because of the metering okay it's now working we have different readings and different behaviors let's see maximum let's measure the output so we have 42 volt on channel b and 43.9 on channel a so it seems uh, safe enough uh, now to bypass the dim bulb we ramp up to 51 on channel a and 47 to channel b now the uh, power supplies they have an adjustment for maximum voltage and maximum current so I believe now we can go for the alignment. I've managed to adjust the maximum output voltage, which should be 51 volt according to the manual. And this is the uh, potentiometer or trim that it's uh, regulating the maximum voltage. Then we have the maximum current but here I also have uh, the emitter uh, electrical zero. So there is not a procedure how to calibrate the, uh, the instrument or the power supply. So I'm going to improvise and find a way if there is any interaction between the regulations. And we will go from there. Well, I also managed to regulate the ammeter is uh, zeroing. So I have, first of all, uh, mechanically zeroed uh, both meters. And then I have regulated this uh, potentiometer and that is the meter zeroing in the ammeter function. So I remain to regulate the maximum current and probably should be regulated onto the 500 uh, milliamp range. So let's uh, try to do that. Well, the channel A, it's working perfectly, regulate perfectly current and voltages. Channel B, I have a problem. It does not regulate uh, the current. So in current mode, um, onto the 0 to 500 milliamp range i am not able to reach 500 i'm only reaching 206 and in the lowest range from 0 to 50 milliamp actually it's going well beyond it's going almost at the same at 200 milliamp so i think there is uh, something wrong in the current regulation circuit so and moreover, there is this uh, bulb which is uh, blown out. It is uh, wired across the two meters. So not sure exactly what should meant for. There is no continuity. So let's see. But this should not get any influence onto the regulation circuit. Well, unfortunately, there is a fault in the uh, current potentiometer, uh, current adjustment potentiometer, as uh, it measures 700 ohms, and the channel that is working, it's measuring 200. So there is uh, uh, an increase of resistance that uh, I believe it's part of the problem. Here we have 197. Uh, this is actually reading 1K. 
Well, I have uh, dismantled the entire potentiometer, but there is nothing wrong with it. And uh, strangely enough, this potentiometer is 1K and uh, it is 1K. And this one is 200 ohm. That is uh, really weird. Why they have done so? I, I can't uh, really understand uh, without uh, the proper schematic. So the problem clearly doesn't lie in the potentiometer. Well, we are back on in track. Turns out that the internal contact of the switch, it was uh, not doing what it should. So now I have a plenty of uh, regulation, but even too much. I'm able to run well beyond the 500 uh, milliamp despite I have uh, the regulation to the limit, to the lower limit. Uh, this is the lowest uh, that I can reach. And we are uh, almost uh, at the middle of the range. Well, clearly we, here we have a, a 1K potentiometer, whereas on the other side, I have uh, the 200 so that is uh, really really strange well uh, i've solved the problem with the channel b with the current limit uh, malfunction i have uh, placed it in parallel with the 1k potentiometer a uh, 500 uh, ohm uh, as a adjustment uh, in parallel with the potentiometer itself is a uh, rheostat and I'm having now the right current. I am at the maximum. So clearly, I don't know if it has been a, an error in the factory or it has been replaced by somebody and it has been uh, replaced with the wrong value. The problem is solved, so I will place in a, a resistor in parallel to the potentiometer itself, and that should uh, should work. It seems also that it tracks uh, uh, pretty fine. So I will just uh, measure the actual uh, value here, and I will place a, a power resistor across the outside terminal of the potentiometer itself. And after that, we have to fix the problem of this uh, meter. The equivalent resistance is 330 ohm. So pretty easy value to, to reach. So yeah, let's go ahead with that. I'm mounting a new NE2 bulb with uh, an 82K resistor in series. I've split the back here, but then I realized that I need, I was in need to remove the front gem. And this is the rear. So I should be able to uh, solder back together and, and having a working bulb. The pilot lamp is back in its place. Uh, I'm going through the dim bulb. Yes, we have light. By passing the dim bulb, I have a good uh, pilot lamp now. Well, okay, I have uh, done a few steps ahead. I have machined a new uh, knob, it's not perfect in color, uh, not easy to make it match with the original ones, but quite happy with that. I also have machined a new uh, foot for, for the outer case with an O-ring in order to make some dampening. 
But I'm back on to the meter uh, reading, which is not, uh, was not uh, functioning as it should. Well, it turns out that the internal resistance of the meter, uh, it's quite different from the one that is working. And this is uh, the one that was uh, very oxidized. So I suspect that there are some uh, twists that uh, are in short circuit, maybe some coils that uh, the coils have some, some number of twists that are in short circuit. So it's uh, reading more. So I have managed that adding two resistors, one for volts and one for the uh, 500 milliamps. And it works pretty fine. Now I am in the range of uh, 50 milliamp. And if I go to uh, 50, I'm on 50 over there. So quite happy with that. If I switch on to 500, now on this range, I can't reach 500 exactly, but uh, let's say 300. And we are at 300, a little bit more. I can't really go over. Let's try 400. Maybe it's, it will hold. Okay, 400, not bad. Not bad at all. So this part is working and uh, I have switched it. Let me do it on camera. I switched the range here onto amps. And if I go onto 500 milliamp, we are at 0.5 amp. So pretty precise on that. If I remove the load and if I switch on to volts and I prepare this for volt reading and I measure the output. Let's go to the maximum. We are at 51 and we have a bit of loss here. Probably because I've added this, I probably should have added on the other side. Let me try to do that. Okay, I have moved the resistor from this side to this side of the potentiometer. And it now uh, reads better. We are almost spot on. Now, I should be able to, uh, let's put, okay, maximum voltage is 51, which is correct. Let's go back to 50. Yeah, a little bit more, but it's good enough for this uh, kind of precision. So let's uh, switch back onto the 500 range. Okay, back on the 500 range. So let's see. We are at 500, it's reading a bit less, but now we should be able to adjust right exactly like that. So this is now working. Let's test uh, the 50 milliamp. Okay, so let's get 50 milliamp. Very good. Uh, this side, by the way, it's perfect, spot on in all the functions. Pretty happy with the knob. Uh, it has been quite a challenge to machine this kind of knob. So, time to address the outer case. This is very bent. I will try to, to straighten it up. 
Okay, that's the outer case with the machined uh, foot and it's quite stable. The right high, the case itself, uh, it's in rough shape. Uh, that is the best I can do with it. Uh, but not too bad in, uh, in the end. So I can now reassemble in the case and see how it looks like. And that is the final result with everything reassembled, all the issues fixed, all the error uh, fixed. Uh, the problem of the reading is completely fixed. So the instrument is, uh, I mean, the power supply is completely and fully working as it should. And I'm quite happy with that. This will allow me to proceed with the projects of Tetronix uh, restoration. Uh, it will not come very soon as I have to prepare a special jig, but this is uh, quite something that it's quite a long time that I would like to, to do. So I hope you have enjoyed this uh, repair and uh, I'll be back soon. So thank you very much for watching.